Chapter 1 Summer 2009 It was a lovely, sunny summer's day, and like many families, we were trying to decide what to do with our Sunday afternoon. Can we go to the dog place? Victoria, my youngest stepdaughter, asked. Two weeks previously, we'd adopted our latest rescue dog, a beautiful brindle greyhound lurcher we'd named Sophie from the dog pound, situated about 15 miles from our home. Located out of town in the countryside, it was a pleasant location and a nice little run out in the car, so we agreed to pay them another visit. The girls, at that time age 9 and 10, wanted to take Sophie with us, but we convinced them that that wasn't a good idea. Sophie might think we were taking her back there, and that wouldn't do at all. We'd take our pack leader Tilly, the little crossbreed terrier blessed with incredible intelligence and ability on the agility course, and who was learning search and rescue techniques at dog training. She loved car rides, so it would be a little treat for her. So, after lunch, we set off in the car and Julie arrived at the pound about half an hour later. As soon as we got out of the car in the car park located outside the gates of the dog pound, we could hear the sounds of multiple dogs barking from within. They all wanted a home and were letting the world know it. We were greeted warmly by the staff in the office, as they knew us well enough by that time. We'd already adopted a few dogs from them, and we were no strangers to the place. Back again? Louise asked, as we smiled as if to say we didn't have a choice in the matter. Just thought we'd have a look around, I replied. Sophie is doing really well, so we decided we might find another new friend. You can't keep away from the place, Louise laughed, and she was right. The layout of the kennels at the pound was basically a large rectangle with dog pens around the perimeter and another central building housing a further number of pens. Juliet and Victoria set off to the right, I went to look in the central building, and Rebecca, aged ten, set off on her own to the left. After a few minutes of talking to various dogs through the bars of their pens and wanting to adopt them all if I could have, Rebecca entered the building and called to me to come and look at something. You've got to see this dog, she said, and she took my hand to pull me in the desired direction. At the far end of the courtyard, two pens from the end of the row, she pointed to a dog. Because of the way the place was built, not a lot of natural sunlight entered the dog pens, depending on the sun's position in the sky. Here I saw the dog Rebecca wanted me to look at. Lying at the front of its pen, in a tiny triangle of sunshine, was a medium-sized black dog. That wasn't the remarkable thing about it, however as all dogs love lying in the sun. What was amazing about this particular dog was the fact that he dragged his blanket from his bed in the stall at the rear of his pen to the sunny spot at the front, beside the bars. Clever dog, I thought. Hello there, I said to the dog. Are you a clever dog then? As if he understood my question, his tail began wagging as if to confirm a positive reply. Can we have him please? Rebecca asked. Whoa there, wait a minute, I replied. We only came to have a look around. Of course, I was lying. We all knew that if we found a suitable dog, we'd be adopting another rescue. Juliet and I hadn't put that thought into words. Oh, please, can we have him? Look, he's got white socks on, Rebecca pleaded. We'll go find your mum and Victoria, I said. They're looking around too, don't forget. Looking a little crestfallen, Rebecca trudged along behind me as I went to find the others. A minute later we found them on the other side of the courtyard-shaped kennels, looking at a little terrier in a pen, together with another slightly larger crossbreed. 